So today we're going to start by looking at the mass continuity equation and deriving the mass continuum equation in Cartesian coordinates. Now, what's the purpose of this? This will basically allow us to analyse a fluid and it will be able to, for a specific point in the fluid, determine things that we don't know based on the things that we do know. This equation goes hand in hand with the Navier-Stokes equation and we look at it because it will tell us a lot more about the fluid, again, based on the things that we already know. We're going to look at a fluid spout, for example, which is the streamlines of density rho, and we're going to imagine a little point, a very small point, blown up to be this cube. And we're going to look at the mass flow into the cube and the mass flow out of the cube. And the difference in that, if any, will equal the change in mass, quite obviously. Hence, mass continuity equation. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to magnify this even further so that we can actually see it. And then we're going to be drawing a coordinate system. y going upwards, x going to the right, and z going into the page. So the obvious things to mention is if we look at this cube, which is obviously very, very small, we can start by giving some dimensions to this cube in terms of the y, z, and x coordinate systems. This width is dx, the width of the cube is dx. The depth of the cube into the page is dz, and the height of the cube is dy. So because it's a cube, one of the first things that we can say is the volume of the cube has to equal the width times the height by the depth. That's the volume of the cube. Next, we can also say that the various surface areas of the cube are the surface areas of each face of the cube. So this is the dx dy, this is the dy dz, this one here, and obviously this one back here. And then the dx dz is the bottom and top face. So we're going to assume that fluid is going in from the faces that we can't see. So fluid is going to go in from this direction, from this direction, and from this direction. So these are going to be that's going to be m in x because it's traveling in the x direction. That's going to be m in y because it's traveling in the y direction. And that's going to be called m in z because it's traveling in the z direction. And then we're going to look at our flow out. The sum of the um, inflows, the x, y, z inflows, minus the sum of the x, y, z outflows will equal our change in mass. So one of the first things is what is, our gonna, what is going to be this change in mass? This change in mass is going to be the volume of the cube multiplied by the density of whatever fluid it is. And for it to be a flow rate rather than just the actual mass we divide by time. Next, we're going to look at the sum of the flow ins. So this m in x direction, this flow in in the x direction, will have a certain velocity component. And because this is a really small cube, we're going to assume that the velocity that is hitting this face is constant anywhere on the face. So there's going to be a velocity in the x direction. There's also going to be a velocity in the y direction. And there's also going to be a velocity in the z direction. On this outflow in the z direction, there's going to be a velocity, but it's not necessarily going to be the same velocity as over here. This is going to be the velocity of this plus this length. Okay, So that's not saying that the velocity is this velocity plus whatever velocity it's gained. It's saying that the velocity considered at this point is at the point z plus dz, and the velocity at this point is considered the velocity at z. 
similarly for y and x. We're going to look at the velocities, the, the cumulative mass flow in for various x, y and z's. So the flow rate in in this x direction is going to be the velocity of the flow multiplied by the area because that will give us a volumetric flow rate and this area is dy dz multiplied by the density of the fluid at x because again we're going to assume for now that the fluid is necessarily it can be compressed it can change that's the x we're going to look at the y and then we're going to look at the z as well And similarly, for the flow rate out, we've got our flow rate in. This is now m in is equal to see the velocity in the x direction multiplied by the area that it hits the tangential area multiplied the the density of the fluid at that position plus the same for the y direction where it hits dz dx plus the same for the z direction where it comes in through the back and it hits dx dy then the flow rate out is going to have a different velocity because it's at a different point the same area because it's still a cube but a different density or in theory it could have a different density rho x plus dx same for y and same for z and going back to our general continuity equation where m in minus m out equals m or rather the flow of mass coming into the object minus the flow of mass coming out of the object is going to equal obviously the change in mass the change in flow rate so one of the things that i'm going to do is i'm going to group these together in the sense that if we look the x components both have dy dz the y components both have dx dz and the z components both have dx dy and also in the x direction for the uh, flow in we've got vx v at x and rho at x we've got v at y and rho at y v at z and rho at z and here we've got v at x plus dx and rho at x plus dx so you can group these two together to say, I'm looking at the velocity and the density in terms of x at the position x. And then we're going to, again, from the continuity equation, minus the velocity at x rho, where x is now x plus dx. Similarly for y and z. Let's have a little closer look at this equation. What you'll see is that we're looking at the velocity at x and the density of the fluid at x at x is x and x is x plus dx. So this is actually just the difference in the velocity of x and the density at that point. Similarly, this is looking at the velocity and the density at y and then it's subtracting the velocity and density at y plus dy. So this is just the difference of the velocity at y multiplied by its density. And then similarly for z. So now we can write down one last thing. We're going to group these together, but we're also going to add in the fact that we know that m dot is dx dy dz by rho over dt. Okay. Now you might notice something quite obvious. This side has dx, dy, dz, and then all of these between them have the same. They've got this one's got dy, dz, this one's got dx, dz, this one's got dx, dy. So we can, as our last step, divide by these three terms for each of these. So this one, we've got dvx rho, can't change that, but we've got dy, dz. Now we're dividing by dx, dy, dz. So the dy dz's cancel and then we're left with over dx.
Similarly for y, we've got dx dz, dx dz, we're dividing by these three, so we're left with dy. And then lastly for z, we've got dx dy, dx dy, we're left with dz. So this is our continuity equation in Cartesian coordinates. Now, you might often see that that row is brought over to this side. So this could actually be zero, and that's often expressed as d rho dt. And you might think, well, what about the sign? It's just convention normally to have them all on the same size and all of the same sign on this side. It's just depending on how it's taught to you. So that's the mass continuity equation in Cartesian coordinates.